up everyone? Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. Here is my Toyan single cylinder overhead cam four stroke motor. And you would have seen in my other two videos where I want to put this into a crawler and I had three cars all up which I was uh, as a candidate. I had two 110 scars that are Bronco and like a rock bouncer um, style of uh, chassis. They were both 110 scale. This guy here is a double E, 1.8 scale, so it is much bigger, much more room for activities. Now, I've been umming and ahhing, and a lot of people have been asking me, and I wasn't going to do this video until I got everything installed, but I wanted to just show this one, showing you what one I picked, which is obviously the double E, and also that I've actually installed the motor and the servo. So, two parts are done. So, I've, the servo is quite easy. The servo on the double E is situated just here and uh, comes from underneath. What? Ooh, that sounds good. Um, I moved it to the front here and everything is connected up. As you can see, like that. And it works really, really well. So the servo part was is out of the way. I'm glad about that because there was not much room there and I didn't want to have it further in the, further in the back of the chassis or something like that, like the old school Tamiya's. So I'm glad it's right at the front there, works really well, and uh, yeah, it just it fits right in. The good thing about it, it's got a lot of clearance here for the actual fan of the motor, because that obviously does work. It draws in air and it cools over the engine block to keep or to try to keep things in check, keep those temperatures down to reasonable levels. So onto that, as you can see, I have installed the motor. Now I'm quite happy with it. Um, this is well, I guess you can call it revision 2. The motor was sitting a little bit higher before and it was sticking out of the bonnet. The problem with that is that the center of gravity was a little bit too high, I guess, for a crawler. And I wanted to try and make the actual uh, shaft here lower for the gearbox. I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But, as you can see there, it is nicely uh, tied down. And a good thing about it, it sits right in the middle here. I'll put the body on and I'll show you how it looks. I kind of wanted to make it kind of sit right in the middle of the bonnet. But uh, some of you old school guys might know what this guy stuff is. This is Meccano. So I've made up brackets. I'll paint this black and stuff later on. But I made up some brackets using Meccano. I found all this old school Meccano back oh, 20, 30 years ago. Um, this is all my stuff. So when I think it was, when I was about 8 or 10, I played with it. It was in the, uh, in the roof. I got it out and I made it work. So... The motor has several mountings. It's got two on the side of the block, or I think three or four at the bottom. So I've utilized three of them, one at the front and two at the back, to sit it in this rail. And how I done that was, that is like a, how could you say, a U, like if you look at the cross section, it's a U-shaped uh, piece of steel. And uh, funnily enough, that perfectly, here's one right here, that piece perfectly fits right in between those rails, or right over those rails. Now you can see it's a little bit uh, cattywampus, this one bent up. That's why I reinforced it with these two pieces underneath. These are flat pieces of steel that don't move at all. So as you can see, it fits over there. It wraps around the side of the rail, and uh, I've secured it through there. Drilled a few more holes. Um, and on that, all I remember, these two, because if you, if you guys might want to follow this and do it at home, that's sweet. These two suspension mounts were in. I had to move them out about a centimetre or 10 millimetres on either side. And as you can see just here, these are massive grub screws with obviously a nice hole in the middle. Um, I've just used them as spacers and it works really well. Super stiff. I'm really happy with it actually. As you can see, it fits in there like a glove. And um, I'll paint it up later and make it look a little bit more pretty. But uh, there we go. Now on this motor, you have this tube here. Some people might be asking, and that's for the oil, excess oil. Now I might put like a little, uh, I could run it just underneath here. I might put like a little catch can on the side here to uh, catch it every now and then. You don't need to, ref you know, don't need to empty it every time you run it. It just fills up eventually. But there we go. Now I got, I've been looking online for, now I might need your guys' help. There's a, a gentleman online by the name of, go check out his channel. Dennis Dempsey Radio Out of Control. This guy has already put one of these motors and working 
in a HG P407, like the um, that knockoff Bruiser slash Mountaineer. I had one of them, I got rid of them. Damn, should have kept it, I could have used it for this. But check out his channel, send him some love, tell him he came from here. It'd be interesting to know how many people actually went there and had a look. He's got 1.2 a thousand subs but he does some really really cool work he's actually got one running right there so Dennis thanks for the inspiration um, well thanks for the help of what gearbox to use because I put this in and then I was looking for gearboxes and your uh, and, and uh, check the HG uh, Bruiser clone and yours came up and think hang on a minute that same motor so e excellent so please go to that guy's channel um, it'd be awesome he's got some really fantastic stuff but on that point, I had, this is the original gearbox that came with the car, had it mounted, ready to go, kind of umming and ahhing, and uh, it just didn't look nice. It just wasn't up to what I would call, well, what I'd be happy with. And I made a fit and everything like that, good if I could do it one-handed. I made a fit in there, cut the, well, there we go, cut the, cut some slots in the plastic here to kind of get it to roughly where I run, as you can see. It kind of looks decent. But the first problem is the pitch on this gearing is wrong. So that's plastic, uh, or normal, normal spur gears are majority or plastic anyway, but the pitch of that is wrong. It just doesn't uh, bind very well. And the, probably the second and probably even biggest thing, it doesn't have a brake. So I've got to, I had to figure out how to hook up a brake. Now, when, when I saw Dennis's uh, video, he actually used the Revo 3.3 gearbox, which and the one he has has reverse. I thought that's a fantastic idea. So, what do you guys think? Should I get the Revo 3.3 gearbox? I think it's fantastic because it's got, you don't, don't necessarily need the reverse part, but it's got the brake and it fits in, it could fit in perfectly here because it's got a front and rear uh, output for the front and rear differentials. Or maybe an old T-Max, um, yeah, maybe an old T-Max gearbox. That'd be pretty cool as well. What, but, uh, let me know what you guys think, because once that's in there, I'll make up a mounting here, just get some nice aluminium plate, or try to use some of that uh, Meccano, fit it up here, and get that uh, mesh perfectly in line, because the motor's sitting where it is, it's not going to be moved, um, it's not going to move, maybe, I, there is slight movement for uh, adjustment, sorry, for the mesh, to get that perfect, but I'll try to get that down pat when I do the uh, gearbox, maybe I'll make some little holes in there, a little bit bigger, so I can move that around, and mesh it up pretty perfectly because I don't know oh, that right that, that wasn't on before I received another package from engine DIY DIY sorry and that is another one of these starter sets to get these motors running because when you get them it just includes a flywheel no clutch bell no electronics so you know it they comes with an f-type OS plug for four stroke engines it comes with another that's the igniter for the glow plug which you see just here, it's on the motor, it stays on there. It doesn't stay ignited, it, ignited, it just uh, ignites it once it uh, click that little switch. Fuel tubing, there's a little switch to start the starter motor. What else do we have in here? Fuel tank. And here is the starter, the starter system itself. So it's a Toyan uh, Pro PQ, I think it is. Runs on 2 to 3S battery, and that's the one that you see. I'll, I'll show you later on. And that's the one that uh, starts this little starter motor on the side, as you can see. So I've got another one, another one of those, and I needed a clutch bell. Now, the good thing about uh, engine DIY, they have one with a single speed like that, and also a dual speed uh, clutch bell, which I had around here somewhere. I'm not too sure where it is. Oh, here it is. Just there. So I got that as well. Uh, maybe you can make that work. But uh, there's the motor, there's the other one there, so I might I might get one of those HGs, the Bruiser clones, and put that in there, thanks to Dennis, and if I can get another one of those gearboxes. But that's the uh, additional flywheel we get when you get the uh, clutch bells, and this is a stock one that you kind of run if you want to leave it on a piece of wood and stuff like that, just use it as a showpiece. There we go. The link's in the description when I go check all that, including the motors and the uh, starting system and all that kind of stuff. So, what I'll do, I'll show you how this looks. So, if I can do it one hand, that'd be sweet. Now, moving on, before I put on, I might have to get rid of some of this interior because I've got to obviously put the servos in, you know, servo in there for the throttle and brake and the fuel tank and some of this electronics. And then it'll also have a battery in there. Oh, fun times, but hey, it's, uh, it's 
been fun so far. Now if I get this here, if I can do it one handed, which I can, check out this. Check out how that motor fits in there like a glove. And the good thing about it, it doesn't protrude at all. Now that would be cool as well, I guess it's a double edged sword, you might like it, you might not. It'll look cool sticking out of the bonnet, but uh, how I've done that at the moment, it fits perfectly because look at that, it's actually higher than the body, but the Land, the Land Rover bomb uh, lid has got a bulge in it, so it fits perfectly. And it's, you can hear the magnet, so it's got two little magnets there. That's why, and I'm glad, a lot of you, well pretty much I reckon 80% of people said put it in the uh, Land Rover. So, there you go guys, I have, I'll put a little return spring on here just for the meantime so I can just crank it up without putting my finger there to hold it without revving it up, but look at that it fits in there really nice uh, I can there's a grill at the front here with no holes in it so I might get a Dremel and cut the holes in there make it a real vent so it actually can suck in air or help it anyway to help this fan draw our air over the uh, engine itself but isn't that pretty cool so it's, a, it's, a, it's going to take us some time, I um, hope you guys are patient, I've got a lot of other activities as well, but yeah, I think it fits in nice, obviously you've got to make, move that exhaust from out there, maybe you can run some, uh, get one of those like little nipples, screw it into the exhaust and run a tube all the way to the back where the exhaust actually is situated in the real car, but um, awesome eh? What am I might do, I might, let me hook up the uh, starting system and I'll start it in the car so we can have a have a good look and then I'll wrap this video up but uh, excited so far and uh, if any of you guys have another um, opinion on what transmission to use please let me know so it's either the Revo 3.3 or the Revo or an old school like the T-Max it doesn't have to have reverse but it, the good thing about it, it does have the brake and the, the pitch and the, the, the mod uh, gearing is perfect for the current uh, clutch housing okay let me see if I can do this one handed Super pump it as you can see. That's just a clutch spinning. As you can see, it fits in there nicely, doesn't it? Super pumped. I'm happy with how it's been, uh, how it's worked out so far. So, sorry, it's, the gearbox isn't sorted out, but this stuff takes time. And yeah, it's not my only, <laughs> it's not my only project, but I can even maybe imagine putting like a little uh, radio in, in there, like Johnny Q90 has. Imagine that. That'd be sweet. But a lot of a lot of work to do. Got a mount of battery, it doesn't need to be this big, but a 3S battery. Mount that little controller, maybe I'll change that for a switch and maybe activate it by another channel on the controller. So that'll be sweet. And the gearbox. So guys, hope you like this video. Please uh, send some uh, Dennis some love. Check out his uh, channel, subscribe if you'd like as well. But uh, thanks for your time. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe, click that notification bell of all the good stuff because there is heaps of heaps of content coming up uh, in the near future. So thanks guys, hope you enjoyed the video.